Number 10. Tamra Maiochi. In June of 2018, a Brazilian football supporter died in a freak fall while celebrating her national team's victory in the knockout stages of the World Cup. 30-year-old Tamra Maiochi had been watching the match with her friends at a house in Itatiba in the southeastern state of Sao Paulo. As the referee blew the final whistle, Maiochi got up from a sofa with her cell phone in one hand and a crystal wine glass in the other. She wanted to join the rest of her group in the celebration but suddenly tripped. The woman reached out to a coffee table in an attempt to stop herself from falling but slipped and impaled her neck on the wine glass. It shattered and a shard cut deep into Maiochi's neck, severing her jugular vein. Blood started pouring profusely from the open wound and her panic-stricken friends struggled to stop the bleeding by wrapping towels around her neck and applying pressure. Unfortunately, by the time emergency services arrived at the scene, Maiochi had already passed away. An inquiry was planned, but as stated by local authorities, there were no signs of foul play. Number 9. Irena Milosevic Irena Milosevic passed away in December of 2019, following an accident that occurred at a parent's home in Serbia. 30-year-old Milosevic had told her family that she was going to take a shower. The woman's parents, Vesela and Nabosia, got worried as she'd been in the bathroom for over an hour. They knocked on the door and, upon receiving no reply, entered the bathroom to find their daughter unconscious on the floor. They called the emergency services and paramedics arrived at the residence but, unfortunately, could do nothing more aside from confirming that Milosevic was dead. Local police investigated the matter and concluded that a large amount of steam had caused the bathroom tiles to become slippery. Milosevic lost her balance as she stepped on the surface, fell and broke her neck. Number 8. Yulia Sharkham In August of 2019, a young mother from Belarus was killed under circumstances directly involving her infant daughter on the day that she was celebrating her 21st birthday. Yulia Sharkham and her family were at a friend's house in the village of Starosello on August the 31st. She was placing her two-year-old in a BMW E34 through a half-open front seat window. The child then pressed the automatic switch, closing the window on her mother's neck, thereby effectively garroting her. Sharkham's husband found her unconscious with her head still trapped inside the vehicle. He broke the jammed window and released her. An ambulance traveled to the location and transported Sharkham to a hospital. Due to pressure applied by the window on her neck, the woman's brain was critically deprived of oxygen. Sharkham suffered irreversible brain damage and died eight days after the tragic accident. Number 7. Jao Maria de Souza A Brazilian man died following an accident involving a falling cow in July of 2013 in Caratinga, a town of the Minas Gerais region which is traditionally known for raising cattle. Jao Maria de Souza, aged 45, was lying in bed while a cow was grazing on a hill behind his house. The animal, tipping the scale at about a ton and a half, then stepped on the asbestos roof of de Souza's home. It collapsed under its weight and the cow fell on de Souza, inflicting severe internal injuries. According to his relatives, the man had appeared to be in good condition, but it took too long for him to be examined by a doctor. The day after the incident, he passed away due to internal bleeding. While unusual, it had been the third such incident to take place in the region in recent years. The other two cases, however, yielded no casualties, only one close call. As a cow had fallen through the roof of a home, it landed right next to the spot where a baby and a small child were sleeping, with many hence describing their survival as miraculous. Number 6. Jennifer Reardon On April the 17th of 2018, Albuquerque bank executive Jennifer Reardon became the first person to die in an accident on a U.S. airline in nearly a decade. 43-year-old Reardon was sitting with her seatbelt fastened as Southwest Flight 1380 was at a cruising altitude of an estimated 32,000 feet. Suddenly, a fan blade broke off inside the left engine of the Boeing 737 and shrapnel was hurled against the side of the aircraft. The fast-moving flow of debris shattered Reardon's window, resulting in her being sucked halfway out of the plane. Over the course of the next 17 minutes, other passengers scrambled to pull the woman back inside while the pilots initiated an emergency landing. The passengers managed to retrieve Reardon, but she'd already suffered critical injuries and ultimately passed away from blunt force trauma. She was survived by her high school sweetheart husband and two children. Number 5. Dead from Laughter 
While extremely rare, dying from laughter has stricken several unlucky people throughout history, dating back to ancient times. Their demise was typically a consequence of asphyxiation or cardiac arrest. Greek Stoic philosopher Chrysippus is among the earliest reports of such an occurrence and he's commonly known as the man who died laughing at his own joke. In the early 200s BC, at the time of the 143rd Olympiad, he saw a donkey eating his figs and then jokingly told a servant to give the animals some wine to wash them down. 73-year-old Chrysippus then died in a fit of laughter. On October the 14th of 1920, dog trainer Arthur Cobcroft was at his home in Leichhardt, Australia and reading a newspaper from five years earlier. Amused at the difference in price for some commodities, the 56-year-old made a remark to his wife and then erupted in laughter. He suddenly collapsed during the fit and died with the doctor that examined him, concluding that he'd succumbed to heart failure, brought about by excessive laughter. In the late 1980s, Danish audiologist Olli Benson, aged 56, was watching the initial run of A Fish Called Wonder. He reportedly found a scene so humorous that he'd laughed himself to death. Number 4. Sakan da Silva In the spring of 2009, a woman from Kazakhstan, reported as being the world's oldest person, passed away following an accident in a new apartment that the local government had gifted her. A census in the city of Karaganda revealed that one of its citizens, Sakan da Silva, was 130 years old. According to official documents and her identity card, da Silva had been born in 1879. To put her extraordinary longevity into perspective, the woman was born at the same time that Thomas Edison introduced the light bulb to the world. She was 47 when Joseph Stalin first conducted a census in the region and already retirement aged at the dawn of World War II. When interviewed by local media outlets, De Silva stated that she didn't have a secret for her staggering senectitude, but did mention that she'd never taken pills or eaten sweets. Some sources have claimed that her record-breaking age might have been exaggerated and the result of poor record keeping. The doubts were never dispelled, even though local demographers maintained the documentary evidence was genuine. Nevertheless, it was clear that De Silva belonged to an exclusive group of super centenarians, people who lived to be 110 or beyond. As more media outlets became interested in De Silva's story, Kazakhstan officials wanted to avoid negative publicity as she was living in impoverished, overcrowded conditions with a number of family members. She was personally congratulated by the mayor of Karaganda and given an apartment. In April of 2009, De Silva slipped in the bathroom of her new place and suffered a broken hip. Her condition gradually got worse and she ultimately passed away in early May. Number 3. Sergio Milan In January of 2020, a massive explosion occurred at a petrochemical plant in the Spanish city of Tarragona, about 50 miles south of Barcelona. It's believed that the blast originated in a reactor used to produce ethylene oxide, which is part of the composition of varied products, including detergents. Firefighters found the lifeless body of an IQOXE plant worker among the debris. Eight other employees were hurt, two of whom suffered life-threatening burns. Another tragic demise associated with the explosion occurred roughly two miles away on the outskirts of the city. The extraordinary force of the blast launched a metal fragment weighing about a ton across that entire distance. It struck the side of a building and landed on the floor of an apartment above the one inhabited by 59-year-old shopkeeper Sergio Milan. His ceiling collapsed on top of him as the weight and momentum of the fragment above had resulted in a complete structural failure. The unfortunate circumstances of his death were corroborated by Tarragona Mayor Paul Ricoma, who also expressed his condolences to Milan's family. Number 2. Elizabeth Isherwood In September of 2017, Elizabeth Isherwood from Wolverhampton, England, was renting a villa near McKinleth, Western Wales. The 60-year-old former police officer was alone at the property. On September the 24th, she was returning from the bathroom at night. Isherwood entered an earring cupboard. The door handle then broke behind her as the round part of the knob had come off the internal mechanism. Isherwood was trapped in the cupboard, naked, cold, and in complete darkness. She removed some shelves and then began clawing her way through a wall. She reached the copper piping and ripped a piece off, which she used to continue her digging. Unfortunately, in doing so, she burst a pipe, causing cold water to pour on her body, which only accelerated the hypothermia to which 
she ultimately succumbed. Isherwood was inches from freedom as she'd managed to pierce through to the other side of the wall but had failed to realize it because a picture covered the exit hole. Her lifeless body was discovered in late September by caretakers investigating a leak at the property. It's unclear why Isherwood had entered the cupboard in the first place. A coroner recorded a verdict of misadventure, attributing her death to the sheer bad luck of the knob disintegrating while she was inside. Number 1. Vladimir Likonis In December of 2009, Vladimir Likonis, aged 25, was at his parents' home in the city of Konotop, northern Ukraine. Relatives then heard what was described as a loud pop coming from Likonis' room. His brother, Rostislav, went to check on him and found a gruesome sight as Likonis, still reclined in his chair, was covered in blood. Half of his face was horrifically disfigured and his lower jaw was missing. Paramedics were called to the scene, but Likonis succumbed to his extensive injuries. The investigation seemed to indicate that the young man had taken his own life, but there were no firearms found on the premises. It later emerged that his death had occurred due to a combination of bad luck and his love of chemistry. He'd studied the discipline for several years at Kiev Tech University and was known as a prodigious student. On his computer table, the authorities found a saucer with powdered citric acid, as well as another bag with a white powder. The latter was collected by forensic experts who determined it had explosive properties and was likely used by Laconis in various experiments. He also had a habit of chewing gum and dipping it in citric acid. It's believed that at some point he got too distracted and accidentally dipped his gum in the explosive powder instead. Laconis' saliva activated it, triggering the blast that destroyed half his face. As stated by police spokeswoman Elvira Biganova, the two powders were so similar that anybody could have mixed them up. Number 7. Alexander Kirkley 32-year-old tree surgeon Alexander Kirkley was cutting branches off of an ash tree in Oxford, England on February the 12th of 2016 when his chainsaw abruptly malfunctioned. Documents from a subsequent inquest by Oxford Coroner's Court detailed how the dangerous tool had kicked back and struck the man's neck, causing him to fall unconscious. One of Kirkley's colleagues attempted to stymie the bleeding from his neck wound until the eventual arrival of emergency medical personnel. Kirkley was rushed to John Radcliffe Hospital, where he ultimately passed away from his injuries. The Oxford-born tradesman was later described by one of his former trainers as one of the most safety-conscious tree surgeons he'd ever encountered. Furthermore, a health and safety executive agent told the court that he believed Kirkley and his co-workers had been using the tree cutting equipment in accordance with regulatory safety requirements and ultimately attributed the fatal accident to bad luck. Speaking after the inquest, Kirkley's mother called his death a fluke of nature and indicated that the Kirkley family would be exploring ways to make the tree surgery profession safer for workers. Number 6. Paul Welsh on January the 2nd of 2021, 53-year-old Paul Welsh was involved in a freak accident while walking along the shoreline in Cornwall, England. As was later detailed following an official inquest into the incident, the man had been in the process of restoring a boat at Sailor's Creek when a considerably sized tree suddenly crashed down onto the area where he'd been working. Local firefighters rushed to the scene and found Welch in critical condition after having been violently struck by fallen branches. While being transported to the hospital, Welch ultimately died from the major head injury he'd sustained in the accident. According to the coroner who reviewed the case, the land on which the victim had been working on the day of his death was owned by Trefusis Estate. The company had reportedly agreed to allow Welch to keep his boat at Sailor's Creek while he restored it back to seaworthy status. A Trefusis Estate official indicated that a local arborist company called Treewise had been responsible for performing periodic tree maintenance in the area. During the inquest in June of 2022, it was revealed that Welch's death had been the result of tragic misfortune, as the tree that ultimately killed him had accidentally been overlooked during Treewise's recent inspection of the land. Number 5. Eduardo Gonzalez a teenage criminal was arrested in early 2011 after he and two accomplices were caught stealing vehicle emblems from a car dealership in Lufkin, Texas. After the suspects fled with the stolen merchandise, they reportedly hit a critical spot of bad luck 
When their car broke down on South 1st Street, police officers eventually stopped to check on the disabled vehicle, at which point they allegedly noted the distinct smell of marijuana emanating from inside. The three occupants, one of whom was named as Eduardo Gonzalez, were detained on suspicion of drug possession. Upon further inspection of the car, the police found a total of eight vehicle emblems that had been swiped from the hoods of Cadillac Escalades parked on the lot of Peltier Chevrolet, which was located a short distance from where the getaway car had eventually broken down. Gonzalez and his two associates were consequently charged with criminal mischief, as well as possession of drug paraphernalia. According to subsequent reports on the matter, the incident marked the second occasion in as many years that Gonzalez had been arrested under especially misfortunate circumstances. In June of 2009, the teen had allegedly burglarized a vehicle at Jews Wrecker Service in Lufkin. Upon the arrival of the police, Gonzalez had fled the scene on foot and the chase reportedly culminated with him unwittingly running right into the pursuing officers. Number 4. Arisara Carbdecho Time model and social media influencer, Arisara Carbdecho fell into a coma and needed to be hospitalized following an unfortunate choking mishap in March of 2022. According to the 27-year-old's mother, she'd been rushing to finish a meal on the day of the incident when the food she was eating, reported as having been pork kebabs and sticky rice, became lodged in her throat. Unable to breathe due to the blockage in her windpipe, Carbdecho was rushed to the hospital to receive emergency treatment. Unfortunately, however, by the time of her arrival, her brain had already been deprived of too much oxygen and she was consequently placed on life support. After spending the next three months comatose in the hospital, Carbdecho ultimately passed away on June the 6th of 2022. The doctors in charge of her care indicated that the entire ordeal was fraught with unlucky circumstances and that the prominent social media figure's initial arrival at the hospital was about nine minutes too late to save her life. Number 3. Dustin Sean Mitchell The authorities in Johnson City, Tennessee charged a particularly unlucky petty criminal in connection to the theft of a shoe and a skateboard from a parked car on April the 5th of 2015. The victim of the alleged auto burglary told the police that the suspect had broken into her vehicle in the parking lot of the Lake Bridge Healthcare Center in order to steal the items, which were valued at approximately $320 in total. The incident was captured in its entirety by security cameras positioned nearby and investigators were ultimately able to use the footage to identify the thief as 31-year-old Dustin Sean Mitchell. At the time of his identification, Mitchell was already in custody at the Washington County Detention Center on an unrelated charge of failure to appear in court. The latter offense had resulted in bond revocation from his initial arrest, which had occurred roughly a week earlier on March the 27th, at which time he'd been hit with numerous charges, including his fourth DUI. Mitchell had allegedly been spotted driving erratically in a stolen vehicle, inside of which officers also found several illegal substances. His detainment in relation to the shoe and skateboard theft, his third arrest in a matter of weeks, brought an additional $11,000 to his bond. Number 2. Wichita Plane Crash On October the 30th of 2014, a twin-engine airplane crashed shortly after taking off from the Flight Safety International Learning Center at Wichita Mid-Continent Airport in Kansas. The craft reportedly being flown by decorated pilot and air traffic controller Mark Goldstein collided with a building killing three people that were undergoing a training session in a flight simulator. Only seconds into his flight, 53-year-old Goldstein, who ultimately died in the accident as well, reported to the control tower that he'd lost power in his left engine. Following a subsequent investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, it was determined that the pilot's failure to maintain lateral control of the airplane after a reduction in left engine power, as well as his failure to follow the emergency procedures for an engine failure during takeoff had been the primary causes of the eventual crash. The resulting fire was extinguished less than an hour after the initial accident by airport police and fire crews, who had reportedly undergone a fire safety training session the previous day. News of the tragic incident went viral online, with many commenting on how the victims had been particularly unlucky 
given how improbable it was to die in an airplane crash while inside a grounded flight simulator. Number 1. Melanie Martinez The devastating tropical cyclone nicknamed Hurricane Isaac tore through the town of Braithwaite, Louisiana on August the 29th of 2012. Having had multiple very close experiences with other tropical storms in the past, local resident Melanie Martinez began preparing for her and her family to flee from their home as soon as the hurricane arrived in Braithwaite. However, after the woman's pickup truck unexpectedly broke down, the Martinez family was forced to take refuge from the storm in the attic of their house, along with her husband, her eight pets, and her 74-year-old mother, who relied on dialysis to live. Martinez was trapped in the attic until Hurricane Isaac had swept through the area. Then, at about 2 a.m., floodwater surged over Braithwaite's eight-foot levee, and a secondary wave hit the town. A brave neighbor eventually broke into the Martinez's house and rescued them from the attic, but not before the storm had left the home in ruins. In the wake of the incident, Martinez was dubbed the unluckiest woman in America, as it marked the fifth occasion in her lifetime in which her house had been destroyed by a hurricane. As was detailed in an article published by The Guardian, each of Martinez's previous Louisiana homes had been wiped out, first by Hurricane Betsy in 1965. Similar incidents followed with Hurricane Juan in 1985, Hurricane George in 1998, and Hurricane Katrina in 2005. According to subsequent reports, the home that had been decimated by Hurricane Isaac had just recently undergone $20,000 worth of renovations on an episode of the reality TV series Hideous Houses. Number 6. Happy and Christy Wade In April 2021, Happy and Christy Wade's home security camera recorded an unexpected encounter with a wild bobcat in Burgle, North Carolina. The video showed a man walking out onto his driveway, enjoying his cup of coffee. As the man walked toward the back of his vehicle, his wife followed behind him, but suddenly stopped in her tracks when she heard a loud yowl. Before either could react, a bobcat leapt toward the woman, attacking her viciously. She panicked and began running between the two cars parked in the driveway. As the animal clung to her back, Happy, her husband, stepped forward and grabbed the wildcat, managing to get it off his wife. The bobcat then kept trying to attack him, but he safely kept it away from his body with his arms stretched out. Not knowing what to do next, he walked away from the cars onto the front lawn and hurled the screeching animal in the air as far as he could throw it. A neighbor, alerted by the screams, approached the house at full speed, trying to run after the bobcat. He threatened to shoot it and warned the couple to keep their distance, but the animal managed to get away. The couple were treated for their scratches and had to get over 30 rabies shots each as a preventive measure. Number 5. Stephanie Blaise while spending some time with her family at their Canadian cabin in August 2020, Stephanie Blaise, 44, stepped outside to make a call to her father. Using her satellite phone, she instructed her young son, Eli, to fetch an antenna inside the house as she told her father about some problems with the water line. That was the last time he would hear his daughter speak. As Eli watched helplessly from inside the house, a black bear approached Blaze from behind and attacked before she could react. Hearing the commotion over the phone, her father stayed on the line for several minutes before hanging up and calling again. He was concerned about the disturbing sounds on the other end of the line but reminded himself, bear attacks are one in a million. Blaze's husband, Curtis, ran outside, shooting at the bear to get it off his wife's mauled body. He attempted to give Blaze CPR but by the time he got to her, she was already unresponsive. The attack was described as unprovoked by a conservation officer who denied the animal acted out of hunger. An examination of the animal's remains showed its stomach was full of berries. A GoFundMe campaign was launched to help raise money for Blaze's family in the aftermath. Number 4. Diana Bobber On September 10, 2018, two weeks after being reported missing, 55-year-old Diana Bobber's body was discovered off a trail in Portland's Mount Hood National Forest. Bobber, a Gresham, Oregon resident, was described as an avid hiker, so her family was used to her frequent trekking trips. However, after Bobber failed to call or text back for several days, they grew concerned and contacted the authorities, who then launched a search party. During the two-week period she remained missing, her car 
a black Mazda Miata was discovered near a ranger station and a backpack believed to have been Bobber's was recovered by two hikers on August 30, 2018. When her body was finally found by the search party, medical examiners quickly determined her wounds to be consistent with a suspected cougar attack. There was also evidence that Bobber had attempted to defend herself from the mauling by using a sharp object. Authorities explained that although there are estimated to be over 6,000 cougars in Oregon, this was the first recorded attack in the state's history. After the discovery of the mauled body Allison Bobber, the victim's sister stated, there's a peace knowing she lived her life her way and she loved being in the outdoors. Number 3. S. J. Brooks on August 19, 2018, friends S.J. Brooks, 32, and Isaac Sederbaum, 31, encountered a starving cougar while riding their bikes on a remote trail outside of Seattle, Washington. The two men attempted to scare the animal away, banging their bicycle wheels against the ground and making as much noise as possible. Though their plan seemed to work at first, the cougar launched at them soon after, apparently motivated by hunger. The cougar attacked Sederbaum first, managing to bite at his head. When Brooks attempted to run away, though, the predator let go of its victim's head and chased after him instead. Although seriously injured, Sederbaum managed to get on his bike and ride for over two miles until he reached an area with enough signal to call 911. Police arrived at the scene and rushed Sederbaum to the hospital, while also immediately launching a search for Brooks. Officers located the discarded bike, but its owner was nowhere to be seen. Brooks's body would be found later that day, dragged away from the initial scene by the cougar. Officers fired at the predator as it stood over Brooks. It managed to escape at first but eventually was hunted down with the help of tracking dogs. Its remains were taken back to Seattle in order to determine whether the wild animal had been sick when the attack took place. Number 2. Mara Jo Thomas Kentucky resident Mara Jo Thomas feared for the worst as she rushed to the hospital in July 2022 after being attacked by a three-foot snake just after arriving at her front porch. The reptile had been coiled around a decoration the family had hung from the door, hidden from view so Thomas didn't see it until the animal leapt forward. She felt a sharp pain on her face, suffering small puncture wounds on her forehead and eyebrow. Thomas had been outside the house with her daughter, who managed to step away after the attack and both immediately rushed to the hospital, worried the snake might be venomous. Fortunately, hospital staff assured Thomas the wound wasn't serious. Sergeant Daniel Richardson from Kentucky Fish and Wildlife explained it's highly unlikely to be attacked by a venomous snake in the area. Thomas uploaded her story online, warning people to remove their door decorations. She also added that her husband had managed to scare the reptile away, but she'd still be careful when walking outside. Her story was shared over 52,000 times and got 10,000 comments, with some users suggesting the animal might have been a chicken snake or a yellow rat snake. Number 1. Cassandra Klein On August 20, 2018, 45-year-old kindergarten teacher Cassandra Klein was walking her dog next to a golf course lagoon near her vacation home at a private resort in South Carolina's coastal region when she noticed an alligator emerging from the water targeting her dog. Klein was attempting to protect her pet when the eight-foot predator managed to instead close its jaws around her, dragging her into the lake. An employee working on the 13th hole heard her screams and witnessed Klein struggling against the alligator, water up to her knees. He rushed to call 911, standing on the opposite side of the lagoon, asking the dispatcher if he should try to jump in the water to rescue the woman. He could only watch as the alligator continued to drag Klein underwater. By the time the police arrived at the golf course, Klein had become unresponsive and had suffered severe lacerations to her arms and hands. She was declared dead at the scene. After an examination, the coroner determined the cause of death to be drowning. Klein's husband sued the resort in 2019 for wild negligence, stating that the company was aware of the danger alligators posed for tourists and failed to implement adequate security measures. Number 8. Ashley Gwyndon Rookie police officer Ashley Gwyndon of the Prince William County Police Department in Virginia was responding to a domestic disturbance call in Woodbridge in February of 2016. The incident occurred during 28-year-old Gwyndon's first shift on the job. Active duty Army Staff Sergeant Ronald Williams Hamilton had been engaged in a heated argument with his wife, Crystal, which devolved into a physical altercation. The 29-year-old woman was able to call law enforcement 
before Hamilton killed her by shooting her in the back. As Gwyndon approached the home with two other officers, Hamilton opened fire on them as well. Jesse Hempen and David McEwen, both in their 30s and veterans of the force, were injured in the shooting and survived. Gwyndon, who was also a member of the US Marine Corps Reserve, was struck by gunfire and succumbed to her injuries in a local hospital. Hamilton was arrested at the scene while law enforcement recovered a 45 caliber pistol and a rifle from his home. During his trial, Gwyndon's mother called him a vicious, cold-blooded, heartless killer, while Crystal's mother nearly collapsed in the witness box, referring to him as a coward. A jury deadlocked on giving Hamilton the death penalty before he was sentenced to seven consecutive life terms in September of 2018. Number 7. Dylan Harrison On October the 19th of 2021, Dylan Harrison was on his first shift as a part-time officer with the Alamo Police Department in Georgia. The 27-year-old initiated a traffic stop in the parking lot of the Circle K opposite the station. An unnamed suspect refused to give up his information and engaged Harrison in a verbal altercation that escalated to him pushing the officer. Harrison consequently used his taser on the aggressive man and he was subsequently taken to the Wheeler County Jail. He was later revealed to have been an associate of 43-year-old Damian Anthony Ferguson, who had a lengthy criminal record that included felony arson, theft, and aggravated assault on an officer. Ferguson approached the station later in the day, ambushed Harrison in the parking lot, and shot him dead before fleeing the scene. The officer was survived by a wife and a six-month-old baby. A manhunt was launched and on October the 10th, a Georgia SWAT team and the US Marshals Service took Ferguson into custody at his residence without incident. In December, a Wheeler County grand jury indicted him on several counts that included malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault on a peace officer, and bias-motivated intimidation of first responders. As of 2022 updates, Harrison pleaded not guilty to all the charges levied against him. Number 6. Caitlin Walls Texas woman Caitlin Walls from the colony was fired over a Facebook post before she even got a chance to head into work at a daycare center in 2015. The 27-year-old single mother's choice of words was in stark opposition to what her employer would have been expected of her. As she wrote on the platform, I start my new job today, but I absolutely hate working at daycare. The message was shared around local groups, including one that was centered on yard sales and had over 8,000 followers. A number of social media users began criticizing and insulting Walls, with one going as far as to say she had the bubonic plague. The woman's day continued spiraling downwards when her would-be employer got wind of the social media exchanges. Walls was contacted and told that she needn't bother coming into work as her position had been terminated. The woman later talked to a local media outlet and explained that she was devastated by the outcome of her post. Walls maintained that she'd never meant to offend anyone, adding that as a mother herself, she didn't hate children and had merely been venting. Number 5. Lawrence Davis A worker's first day at work shouldn't be his last day on earth, commented an Occupational Safety and Health Administration employee while examining the tragic death of Lawrence Daquan Davis. In August of 2012, Davis was a temporary worker at a Bacardi Bottling Corps facility in Jacksonville, Florida. He was cleaning glass from under the hoist of a palletizer, a machine that stacks cases of the parent company's well-known rum. A second employee then restarted the palletizer and Davis was fatally crushed by it. A YouTube video reviewing surveillance footage from inside the plant and explaining the circumstances leading up to Davis's death has since been viewed close to 19 million times. He was survived by a fiancé, Alicia, who was reportedly expecting their first child in October. A subsequent OSHA investigation into the matter revealed that Bacardi bottling temporary employees hadn't been trained in lockout tagout procedures to prevent the accidental startup of machines. The company was cited with 12 safety violations, two of which were deemed willful and nine serious. It was fined $192,000 and in a later statement claimed it had resolved all the safety and health issues identified by OSHA. Number 4. Trevor Wiener 
On February the 15th of 2019, Trevor Wiener was on the first day of his human resources internship at the Henry Pratt Company Industrial Valve Manufacturing Plant in Aurora, Illinois. 21-year-old Wiener was a student at the Northern Illinois University and set to graduate in May. A number of media outlets reported him as being in the meeting when 45-year-old Gary Martin was told that his employment was being terminated. The latter had been expecting to be fired from his 15-year position at the company and brought a laser-sighted handgun into the factory. He went on a shooting spree and Wiener was among the first victims to be gunned down. Martin also claimed the lives of an HR manager, a plant manager, a forklift operator, and a stockroom attendant, ranging in ages from 32 to 55. Martin injured another worker who subsequently recovered and then engaged responding police officers in a shootout. Four members of law enforcement sustained non-life-threatening gunshot wounds and a fifth was struck by shrapnel before they shot and killed Martin. Aurora police later revealed that the gunman had been arrested six times in the past for offenses that included domestic violence and violating a restraining order. Additionally, he had served a prison sentence in Mississippi for aggravated assault in the mid-1990s, which barred him from legally owning a firearm in the state of Illinois. Number three, Francis Arte. Rookie Massachusetts City bus driver Francis Arte was on his first ever route on June the 24th of 2013. Simultaneously, at around 5 p.m., Laura Erickson was at her Worcester home with her three sons. The woman was in the shower when the Worcester Regional Transit Authority bus driven by 27-year-old Artie crashed deep into her house, reportedly reaching as far as the cellar. Erickson would later recall seeing the toilet fly out of the wall. As emergency workers responded to the incident, Erickson was taken out on a gurney, but neither she nor her family was reported to have sustained serious injuries. There were four passengers on the bus at the time, all of whom emerged from the wreck largely unscathed. Artie, however, was freed after about an hour as he'd become trapped between the house and bus. When a tow truck eventually removed the vehicle from the building, it became evident that its front had been obliterated and replaced with massive pieces of the home's wall. Artie was left in critical condition and rushed to a local hospital where he underwent life-saving surgery. An extensive investigation into the incident revealed he'd been at fault in the crash and he was charged with driving negligently as to endanger, failure to stay within marked lanes and speeding. Number two, Ursio Perez Jr. Ursio Perez Jr. was helping transport a large piece of industrial machinery during his first day at Navin Higher Hardware and Safety Training Limited in Ireland on January the 16th of 2016. He was holding a heavy hydraulic press as it was being moved on a forklift the industrial vehicle was being operated by the company director's 18-year-old son, whom it would later emerge hadn't received the proper training in handling it. The press was roughly five and a half feet high and precariously standing upright on the prongs of the forklift, with Perez holding support in its side. The machinery hadn't been adequately secured and it toppled over, falling on 20-year-old Perez and crushing him beneath its weight. The man's father, Ursio Perez Sr., worked for the same company. He would later recall seeing his son on the ground covered in blood and claimed that the harrowing image would live with him forever. The younger Perez passed away from his injuries and an investigation was launched. The company was fined the equivalent of over $160,000 for several breaches identified by the inquiry. A judge, however, concluded that the violations hadn't been deliberately committed to maximize profits and that the fatal accident had stemmed from a naive attempt at completing a difficult task. The company assisted with repatriating Perez's body to his native Brazil, while also covering the family's travel and funeral expenses. Number one, Charles Punter. On December the 12th of 2011, at the end of his first day at a job with a company called Max Impact, English marketing man Charles Punter from Colchester, Essex, was planning on taking a bus home. Co-worker Rebecca Price, aged 29, then offered him a lift and the pair then set off in her Ford car. While driving at roughly 45 miles per hour on a stretch of road between Tiptree and Colchester, where the limit was 30, Price lost control of her vehicle. She was in the process of rounding a bend when she smashed into an oncoming Ford Ranger. Price, a mother of one, survived, but 25-year-old punter suffered fatal injuries in the crash. Investigators deduced that she'd been speeding and during the ensuing trial, 
the woman pleaded guilty to causing death by careless driving. She was given a six-month suspended sentence and banned from driving for two and a half years. Through a representative, Punter's family expressed deep disappointment that Price hadn't been given a custodial sentence, adding that the perceived light punishment was not a sufficient deterrent for other reckless drivers. Number 8. Thomas Scully Powers In the middle of a live Alcoholics Anonymous Zoom meeting on May the 21st of 2020, 32-year-old Thomas Scully Powers suddenly began stabbing his father, Dwight, repeatedly while in the nude. The other 20 members of the meeting frantically began calling 911, but it reportedly took them several minutes to establish the Powers' exact location. In the meantime, Scully Powers stabbed his father over 15 times, killing him in the process. It was eventually determined that the incident was unfolding at Dwight's apartment in Amityville, New Jersey. When police arrived at the home, Scully Powers rushed to the second floor and jumped out the window. Inside, officers discovered 72-year-old Dwight's nearly decapitated body as well as evidence that his son had used a mop and bucket to try and clean up the crime scene. Scully Powers was ultimately apprehended a mile away from the apartment, where law enforcement found him trying to wash his father's blood off of his body with several bottles of Dr. Pepper, which he'd stolen from a nearby deli. The young man allegedly confessed to the crime during police questioning and was consequently charged with murder, for which he faced a possible prison sentence of 25 years to life. Number 7. Busby On January the 14th of 2022, a Canadian video game streamer known as Busby was recording a session of Apex Legends when police officers suddenly barged into his room. The Twitch streamer had been struggling with the game and had loudly requested help from his teammates multiple times. His screams concerned the neighbors, who immediately contacted the authorities, believing there to be someone in urgent distress. Police officers made their way into the apartment as they too heard the agonized yelling and were captured on Vusby's webcam, approaching him from behind. Startled, the young Toronto resident jumped up as one of the officers placed a hand on his shoulder. The gamer apologized for creating a disturbance and assured the officers that he required no assistance. Number 6. Donald J. Williams on the morning of August the 11th of 2020, 27-year-old Donald J. Williams gunned down his ex-girlfriend, Maribel Rosada Martinez, as was captured on her daughter's webcam. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, schools in Martin County, Florida, where 32-year-old Rosado Martinez lived with her six children, were closed. Classes thus took place over Zoom. While Rosado Martinez's 10-year-old daughter was online for her morning lesson, Loud screaming and profanity prompted her teacher to mute the meeting's audio. The young girl then covered her ears before the screen abruptly went black. It later emerged that Williams had broken into the house and opened fire on his ex, whom he'd been separated from for over a year and a half at the time. One of the bullets missed Rosado Martinez and shattered her daughter's laptop screen instead, which accounted for the blackout. Fortunately, none of the six children suffered any injuries during the shooting. Williams fled the scene before being tracked down and arrested about 40 minutes later. A Martin County grand jury indicted the man on capital murder charges in February of 2021. As of the case's latest developments, the legal proceedings were still ongoing. Number 5. Nicola Madden on January the 11th of 2022, Nicola Madden died suddenly during a work Zoom meeting attended by her daughter and several colleagues. Subsequent reports indicated that Madden had suffered a massive heart attack at her home in Waterloo, Liverpool. The incident, which happened so suddenly that emergency services couldn't arrive in time to render her aid, reportedly took place the day after her 43rd birthday. Madden's daughter immediately called her father, Stuart McDougall, who in turn dialed 999. McDougal, who'd been amicably separated from Madden at the time of her death, set up a GoFundMe page to help pay for the resulting funeral expenses, managing to raise over $6,000 within the first 24 hours. Number four, Micah J22. 
A female TikTok user identified only as MicahJ22 sparked furious online debate after posting several videos in which she explained why she'd been fired from her home office job. In July of 2022, the woman told her followers that she'd used her laptop to work online but was locked out of the system after her employers had caught her cooking while on the clock. Her contract reportedly stipulated that she was not allowed to leave her desk during work hours and also mandated that the webcam remain activated to allow her activity to be monitored. Micah J22 complained about how her employers dealt with the situation as they'd first told her she was fired before relenting slightly and opting to suspend her instead. Then they restored their original decision and fired her once again. Several viewers posted comments in support of the woman. Many were quick to point out the apparent hypocrisy of the fact that an employee working at an office could take a snack break, but those working from home weren't afforded similar privileges. Number 3. Jason Marshall On January the 7th of 2013, UK man Jason Marshall murdered his lover, 58-year-old Peter Fasoli, before setting his apartment on fire and fleeing the country. The entire episode was recorded on camera beginning with an intimate encounter between Fasoli and Marshall, who was in his 20s at the time, before the situation quickly escalated. Marshall, posing as a policeman, began physically overpowering Fasoli and threatening him with a knife. The latter was then dragged out of the camera's purview as Marshall proceeded to fatally strangle him. Audio recording revealed that the man then spread a flammable liquid around the apartment and set it ablaze to destroy evidence of the crime. Marshall used the victim's credit cards to purchase a plane ticket to Italy. He also began sending concerned messages to Fasoli in an attempt to divert suspicions away from him. The house fire was initially ruled an accident, but in November of 2014, webcam footage of the grisly incident surfaced when the victim's nephew decided to research his family history after reviewing his late uncle's hard drive, which had been recovered from the flames. The nephew came upon a seven-hour recording that included the murder itself and immediately contacted the authorities. Investigators subsequently learned that Marshall had been imprisoned in Italy since July the 9th of 2014, serving a 16-year sentence for the murder of 67-year-old Vincenzo Lale in Rome. For Fasoli's killing, Marshall was extradited to the UK and sentenced to life with a minimum of 39 years before he could be considered for parole. Number 2. Brian Dixon On April the 15th of 2011, 32-year-old Brian Dixon gained access to a Chinese exchange student's apartment while she chatted with her ex-boyfriend via webcam. 23-year-old Quan Liu, a foreign student enrolled at New York University, was strangled by the intruder as her ex, Xian Meng, watched in helpless horror. Liu was then dragged away from the camera and Dixon assaulted her. Meng eventually saw an unclothed Dixon appear on Liu's camera before the screen abruptly shut off. By the time the police arrived at the scene, Liu was already dead. Although the ensuing autopsy's results were inconclusive, medical examiners listed mechanical asphyxiation as the most likely cause of death. DNA found on the victim's body was linked to Dixon, who had subsequently emerged had a documented history of violence. On April the 7th of 2014, Dixon was found guilty of murder and consequently sentenced to 25 years to life behind bars. Number 1. Joshua Kaufman California resident Joshua Kaufman used his MacBook's remote camera capabilities to aid the police in capturing a thief who'd broken into his Oakland apartment and stolen the device. Kaufman, who worked as a designer, reported the incident to the authorities in March of 2011, listing his laptop, Kindle, and jewelry as the items stolen by the intruder. Dissatisfied with the police response, Kaufman decided to use a security app called Hidden to try and locate the computer himself. The app allowed him to track his device as well as use the webcam to take pictures when it was activated. It took a few days for the thief to turn on the laptop, but when he did, Kaufman immediately contacted the police, sending them pictures of the man as well as personal information he'd typed. 
including his work email address and Facebook account. Officers initially disregarded the creatively obtained evidence, prompting Kaufman to post the photos online. He immediately garnered the attention of the press, at which point the police took action. The thief was ultimately identified as 27-year-old Muthana Aldabashi. The latter was arrested at his Oakland home, allowing Kaufman and his laptop to be reunited at long last. Number 10. Catfish on a U.S. Beach In September of 2015, a video captured a woman who had a dead catfish stuck on the back of her leg after her friend had chased her around and hit her with it. What started as a harmless game at a U.S. beach ended with the catfish's serrated fin embedded in the woman's limb. It was nearly impossible to remove the barbed fin without help because doing so without the proper attention and tools could have caused serious injuries. The panicked woman, only identified as Tina, yelled that she was afraid of getting a disease as her friends scrambled trying to figure out what to do. One of them suggested to just yank it out. As a crowd began to form around Tina, some onlookers proposed using pure vodka to cleanse the wound. The video ended shortly thereafter, and no other information was available regarding the outcome of the situation. But it was assumed that Tina ultimately got the help she needed. Number 9. Fisherman in Thailand on May the 22nd of 2022, an unidentified fisherman in Thailand was left fighting for his life after a fish jumped out of the water and got lodged inside his throat. The man was spearfishing completely submerged underwater. At the same exact moment he had come up for air, the five-inch fish had landed into his mouth and wiggled down his throat. The fisherman was left unable to breathe and was rushed to the hospital by others who'd noticed the incident. An X-ray at the hospital confirmed that it was a freshwater fish called Anabas, which has spikes on both its back and stomach. It got stuck between the man's throat and nasal cavity after apparently trying to swim out of his nose. After an hour-long operation, doctors were able to remove the fish, and the fisherman went on to make a full recovery. Number 8. Nopadol Shringham Nopadol Shringham was swimming at Ao Tan Ku Beach in Thailand when a needlefish speared him through the neck on March the 31st of 2022. The man who was in his mid-30s at the time was at the beach with his young son. He'd thrown an inflatable toy into the water when the needlefish jumped out and impaled him in the neck. An expert subsequently explained that needlefish tend to swim around the surface and are not predatory, so it was likely that the toy had startled it causing it to instinctively jump out of the water as a defense mechanism. With the fish dangling from his throat, Shringham and his son called out for help. Fellow beachgoers contacted the emergency services to take him to the hospital for the needlefish to be surgically removed. Doctors tried to extract the fish without harming it, but were unable to do so. The fish died, but fortunately no major arteries were hit, and Shringham was able to make a full recovery. Number 7. Fish Stuck in Man's Rectum An unnamed 30-year-old man went to an emergency hospital in Guangdong, China, after getting a fish stuck in his rectum and experiencing extreme abdominal pain. X-rays and CT scans from the incident, which occurred on June the 3rd of 2020, show just how badly the fish was stuck. When a nurse questioned the man on how the fish had gotten up there, he claimed to have accidentally sat on it, to which the hospital worker reportedly replied, Do you think I'm an idiot? After performing an emergency endoscopy, they identified the fish as a Mozambique tilapia, a species which has spiny fins. The dead fish was too big to safely extract, and the spiky fins had ruptured the man's large intestine. That's when surgeons decided that the only way to get the fish out was to cut open the man's abdomen, and they were ultimately able to extract it from his bowels. Doctors speculated but were unable to know for sure whether the tilapia was still alive or already dead when it had entered the man. Number 6. Russell Ching In December of 2015, a man was pierced through the leg 
by a 500-pound marlin while fishing with his friends 25 miles off the coast of Oahu, Hawaii. Russell Ching had been wrestling with the massive fish for nearly two hours when he and his friends were finally able to pull it onto their boat. The marlin had already died by that point, but upon dragging it into the boat, the fisherman lost control of its weight. Ching was thus stabbed in the lower leg by its sharp snout. In a video of the incident, Ching was seen laying on his back smiling and laughing at the situation despite his injury. He later explained that he was worried about bleeding out as his friends rushed him back to shore, which was about a two-hour journey back. Fortunately, the fish's snout hadn't hit any major arteries and they left it in his leg to minimize the risk of bleeding out. Until he was able to receive medical assistance, he went on to make a full recovery and kept the marlin's snout as a souvenir. Number 5. Skinny Dipping Russian Man On April the 21st of 2016, a Russian man decided to go skinny dipping in a lake only to be bitten on his privates by a fish. The unnamed swimmer had gone on the trip with his friend who filmed the incident from the shore. The latter had warned the skinny dipper to be careful before entering the lake, pointing out that there were lots of fish swimming around. The man dismissed the words of caution, stating that he wasn't afraid of them as he got in the water. Just moments later, he turned around to run out of the lake, saying that something had bitten him. The video captured him covering his nether region as a large fish dangled from it. He was eventually able to remove the fish and suffered no major injuries. Number 4. Sanya, China on September the 1st of 2018, an unidentified man was left in agonizing pain on the beach of Sanya, China, after a stingray had hooked its barbed tail through his shorts and latched onto his genitals. In a video of the sickening scene, the man was seen lying on the sand by the water with the stingray still attached to his shorts. When the emergency services arrived, they realized that they didn't have the equipment needed to safely unhook the barbed tail from the man's privates. They had to improvise with the tools they did have at their disposal and carefully managed to extract the tail. The man went directly to the hospital with paramedics afterwards to make sure everything was all right, and he ultimately walked away from the situation unharmed. The stingray was believed to have died on the beach soon after being removed. Number 3. Pig Kidney Transplant a team of doctors at New York University, Langone Health, successfully transplanted the first pig kidney into a human on September the 25th of 2021. After decades of researching the possible use of animal organs for life-saving transplants, also known as xenotransplantation, scientists made a breakthrough. They were successful in temporarily attaching a kidney from a pig into a brain-dead woman for research purposes. The kidney for the experiment had been gene-modified and specifically engineered to remove the sugar naturally found in pig cells that are unrecognizable to the human body, which results in immediate organ rejection. After experimenting with the genetically modified kidney, the surgeons found that it functioned normally and was not at risk of being rejected. The female recipient in the experiment had wished to be an organ donor, but her organs were said to be unsuitable for donation. For that reason, her family had agreed to allow the scientists to use her body, stating that there was a possibility that some good could come out of it. Since then, a couple of other similar experimental surgeries have taken place. One occurred within days on September the 30th of 2021, when doctors placed two genetically modified pig kidneys into a brain-dead 57-year-old man who'd also chosen to be an organ donor but had unsuitable organs. The kidneys functioned well until the study ended three days later. Number 2. Jensen Beach, Florida in September of 2020, an unnamed Florida man was swimming at Jensen Beach when a small nurse shark sank its teeth into his arm, refusing to let go. In a video recorded at the scene, the man was seen cradling the shark like a baby and smiling 
while ocean and fire rescue teams struggled to detach it. A medic tried to pry the shark's mouth open by pulling on its upper jaw, but the shark did not give in. In spite of his predicament, the man was cracking jokes with the other beachgoers about the incident. He was heard saying that the bite itself didn't really hurt, but that the shark did clench its jaws harder every time he or one of the medics tried to release its grip. After 45 minutes, they were finally able to get the shark off the man, who didn't suffer any major injuries and still held the predatory fish for a while longer after it had been released from his arm. Number 1. Steve Irwin On September the 4th of 2006, Australian documentary maker, zookeeper and wildlife conservationist Steve Irwin was fatally pierced in the chest by a stingray barb while at the Great Barrier Reef. He had been filming for a documentary and had taken a short break to snorkel in the chest deep water. When he saw a short tail stingray, he swam towards the six and a half foot marine creature and approached it from behind. With the intention of filming it swim away, however, the stingray then suddenly turned and began to stab at Irwin repeatedly with its barbed tail, striking him directly through his chest. In the immediate aftermath, Irwin had stated that he thought to have suffered a punctured lung, but in reality, his heart had been pierced, which caused massive internal bleeding. Crew members tried to give him CPR on their boat as he was rushed to the nearest hospital. Unfortunately, the beloved TV personality whose programs had entertained millions around the world was pronounced dead at 44 years old. Number 7. Jordan Stevens on the night of September the 13th of 2020, the director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation held a news conference in which he provided the details of a violent crime spree that had spanned across multiple counties. The extended spate of criminal activity reportedly began at about 9.30 a.m. on the 13th, when St. Louis man D'Angelo Dorsey opened fire inside of a vehicle traveling along Interstate 24, resulting in one death and another casualty. Once traffic on the highway slowed to a stop, Dorsey exited the vehicle and fruitlessly attempted to carjack another motorist, who ultimately escaped unharmed. The gunman then approached a nearby truck and allegedly shot its driver in the face following a heated exchange between the two. It was reported that shortly after the second shooting, Dorsey fired a round into the window of a female motorist's car, striking her in the hand before she drove away from the scene. Dorsey eventually got behind the wheel of a vehicle and rear-ended a car occupied by 23-year-old Jordan Stevens and his pregnant wife, Aileen. Believing the collision to have been an accidental fender bender, Stevens stopped on the side of the highway, at which point Dorsey reportedly took the couple hostage at gunpoint. He forced Stevens to drive to their home in Morrison, where he stole two firearms before leaving with the hostages in a different vehicle. They subsequently drove to the McMinnville area where Dorsey separated the hostages. The gunman then proceeded to fatally shoot Stevens in front of his wife before returning to the interstate. Investigators later detailed how the man's body was recovered along the westbound side of I-24. At the culmination of a high-speed chase between Dorsey and members of law enforcement, the former crashed Stevens' vehicle and took his own life. Aileen was found inside the car with only minor injuries. In the incident's aftermath, it emerged that during the couple's time as hostages, Stevens had begged Dorsey not to harm his wife and unborn child, sacrificing his own life in their stead. Number 6. Ashley Yuki Tianson Shortly before 9 p.m. on May the 14th of 2021, 19-year-old Ashley Yuki Tianson and his girlfriend were sitting in the parking lot of San Mateo Adult School in California when their vehicle was approached by three armed strangers. According to a press release by the San Mateo Police Department, the assailants attempted to steal Tianson's car, but when he resisted, they opened fire on the vehicle's two occupants. Tianson reportedly used his body to shield his girlfriend from the gunfire, and in the process was shot in the torso. Emergency personnel rushed to the scene, and responding officers attempted to administer first aid to the victim. Tianson was subsequently taken to a local trauma center, where he was pronounced dead. During the ensuing police investigation, it was determined that the violent carjacking had been an isolated event, 
Within a few days, investigators had identified and arrested a pair of teenage suspects, both of whom were charged with murder and attempted murder in connection to the incident. On the night of his death, Tianson had reportedly gone to the school to pick up his girlfriend after his shift at the VA hospital where he worked as a security guard. A GoFundMe page was created by the victim's family to help pay for the costs associated with his funeral. Number 5. Danny Humble A man from Northumberland, England, was violently mugged in an underpass during the early morning hours of May the 29th of 2021. Subsequent reports detailed how Danny Humble had been walking home with his girlfriend, Adele Stubbs, at the conclusion of a date night when they encountered a group of rowdy teenagers near a tunnel. As the couple attempted to enter the underpass, the youths suddenly became hostile and began heckling them. It was reported that Humble then confronted one of the teens, after which the group proceeded to viciously beat the 35-year-old man for about 15 seconds. According to Stubbs' account of the incident, Humble, a father of two, put himself in harm's way in order to protect her. She began desperately knocking on the doors of nearby residences and screaming for help as her partner was repeatedly punched, kicked and stomped on by the teens. Humble was left unconscious by the attack and the following day was pronounced dead while being treated at the hospital. Investigators ultimately identified Alistair Dixon, Ethan Scott, Kiros Robinson, Bailey Wilson and an unnamed 17-year-old as the individuals involved in the deadly mugging. Following a criminal trial in Newcastle Crown Court in the summer of 2022, Dixon was found guilty of Humble's murder, while the other four defendants were each convicted of the lesser charge of manslaughter. Number 4. Rodney Clark A violent tornado swept through Madison County, Iowa on March the 5th of 2022, destroying many homes and resulted in seven total deaths. The twister reportedly reached wind speeds of between 136 and 165 miles per hour and registered a four on the enhanced Fujita scale, indicating devastating damage. One of the homes that was directly affected by the hazardous weather conditions was that of Rodney and Judy Clark, a married couple of 20 years. As the tornado approached, the Clarks reportedly took shelter in their bathtub. The house was ultimately leveled by the twister, which sent the couple themselves hurling through the air. While they were still airborne, Rodney reportedly laid on top of his wife and wrapped himself around her in an attempt to shield her from the storm and the incoming impact. The tub eventually landed in a pile of debris roughly 100 feet away from the Clarks' home. Rodney was killed instantly, but his final act of selfless bravery ultimately saved his wife's life. Subsequent reports detailed how the tornado was Iowa's deadliest since 2008, when eight people had perished in the cities of Parkersburg and New Hartford. Number 3. Samantha Menya At about 8 p.m. on March the 26th of 2021, a pair of armed robbers accosted 31-year-old Samantha Menya's boyfriend at his apartment complex in the 4400 block of 15th Street West in Lancaster, California. Menya, having heard a commotion from inside the apartment, went outside to investigate, at which point she came upon her boyfriend's assailants and chased them to an idling sedan that was waiting for them in the lot. In an effort to prevent the would-be robbers from escaping, Menya reportedly stood directly in front of the car. However, the driver ignored the woman in his path and proceeded to run her over as he fled the scene. Menya was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition and, according to subsequent reports, ultimately passed away from her injuries. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, the Los Angeles County Police described the suspects involved in the robbery as being between the ages of 20 and 30. Officials also released surveillance images of the three men and requested that anyone with information about their identities contact the local sheriff's office. The following week, it was reported that one of the suspects, named as Jawan Tamel Welsh Arroyo, had turned himself into the Los Angeles Police Department in North Hollywood. According to Menya's family, she'd been attending school while also working two part-time jobs prior to her untimely death. Number 2. Yesenia Gutierrez 
A pair of teenagers were passing by an apartment in Fort Worth, Texas, at around midday on May the 18th of 2018, when they peered through the window and spotted a video game console inside. They quickly devised a plan to rob the home and subsequently gained entry into the apartment by kicking down the front door. One of the teens who later told police that he was a member of the Crips street gang held the homeowner, identified as Yesenia Gutierrez, at gunpoint and demanded her cell phone, which she willingly gave them without hesitation. According to a police report on the matter, 31-year-old Gutierrez attempted to keep the armed robbers from entering the room where her toddler was sleeping, killing her instantly. The victim's husband returned home to find her lifeless body on the kitchen floor, but fortunately discovered that their child had been left unharmed. The teens involved in the deadly home invasion were later pulled over by members of Fort Worth Police. During the resulting traffic stop, officers found a 9mm pistol that was later forensically linked to the shell casings found in Gutierrez's apartment. They were consequently arrested on one count each of capital murder. Number 1. Danish Baig American rapper Travis Scott hosted the annual Astro World Music Festival at Energy Park in Houston, Texas on November the 5th of 2021. When Scott initially emerged on stage at about 9 p.m., the massive crowd, which had reportedly exceeded the 50,000 attendee limit that had been set by local authorities, pushed toward the stage, causing a human crush. As was later detailed by subsequent reports on the matter, one of the concert goers, identified as 27-year-old Danish Baig, used himself as a human shield to protect his fiancée from the tightly packed mass of people. Baig reportedly struggled to stay on his feet as the crowd surged towards the stage, and although he did manage to keep his partner from getting crushed, he himself was fatally trampled. The victim's fiancé, who ultimately survived the ordeal, was one of the 25 attendees transported to the hospital after the incident, while 300 others were treated at the stadium's medical facilities. Baig was one of eight individuals who was killed on the night of the catastrophic crowd crush. He and his fiancée were reportedly supposed to get married the following month. As of the latest updates on the matter, the victim's family was looking into the possibility of pursuing legal action against Scott and Energy Park. Number 9. Daniel Colazzo On December the 16th of 2011, a temporary worker at the Tribe Mediterranean Foods Hummus Factory in Taunton, Massachusetts, died after he got caught in a piece of industrial equipment. 28-year-old Daniel Colazzo was part of the evening cleaning crew and performing maintenance on a bean mashing machine. Colazzo's arms got stuck inside the masher when its 9-inch rotating blade started turning. He kept being pulled into the machine, which also crushed part of his head, inflicting devastating injuries. The emergency services were called to the scene at around 1 a.m., and Colazzo passed away in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. The plant's parent company was fined over half a million dollars by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration in connection to the incident for not properly training its cleaning workers on lockout tagout procedures. It also emerged that the owner had been fully aware of the extreme safety risk. Federal officials had fined them for failing to follow the safety protocol at another of their New England food processing plants just two years prior. Records indicated that, at the time, investigators had reported the probability that a fatality could occur is likely certain within a year's time frame. Number 8. Chinese Woman An incident at a bus stop in Huangpu, Hankou City, in China's Urbei province, caused outrage on the country's internal social media platforms in 2018. An unnamed woman only reported as being in her 20s had tripped over her luggage after getting off the bus on February the 17th. She fell and landed with her neck between two metal bars only about a palm's width apart. On a U-shaped metal fence, commonly found throughout the country, she got stuck and the bars cut off the oxygen supply to her brain. City police and paramedics arrived about 16 minutes after the incident, and the woman was pronounced dead at the scene. It typically only takes about 5 to 10 minutes without oxygen for brain death to occur. Once photos of the woman's lifeless body began circulating on social media, many users were furious that officials hadn't addressed the reoccurring problem associated with the fence model. In 2013, a woman had died in Beijing in similar fashion. 
The 26-year-old had been left with her head suspended between the railings for roughly half an hour in broad daylight before anyone tried to help. Surveillance footage showed bystanders gathering around to look at her and take photos without attempting to intervene. A pensioner also died on a similarly shaped Beijing fence in 2015, followed by a pregnant woman in 2016. Number 7. Amari Dancy A game of hide-and-seek at a home in Woodbridge, Virginia ended in the intervention of the local fire department. In April of 2020, after a young woman became trapped in an appliance, 18-year-old Amari Dancy had been playing the game with her younger cousins and tried to hide in a top-loader washing machine. The teenager quickly realized that she was stuck and cried out for help to her cousins who, in turn, alerted older relatives present in the home. Dancy's aunt documented the events that followed and posted the content to Instagram as she'd deemed it a cautionary tale for others looking to stave off boredom during the pandemic lockdown. Shortly after 11 p.m., over half a dozen members of the Prince William County Department of Fire and Rescue arrived at the home. Four firefighters were able to remove the top of the appliance and create enough space for Dancy to be pulled out. The teenager whimpered with discomfort as she was lifted from the washer but was otherwise unharmed. Number 6. Virginia Lopez Severiano and Bibiana Ariano de Labra In the spring of 2022, an accident at the Azteca Market in Selma, North Carolina resulted in the death of a 44-year-old worker. Virginia Lopez Severiano was cleaning an industrial food mixer at the bread factory when half of her body got trapped in the machine. It was reported that the piece of equipment was still on when the woman had begun the maintenance work. The Selma Fire Department was alerted and a tedious rescue effort unfolded over the course of nearly 90 minutes. Firefighters used small tools to take the machine apart and free Lopez Severiano. She was airlifted to Duke University Hospital where she succumbed to her injuries overnight. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration launched an investigation into the death which was the second to occur at a North Carolina bread factory within the span of a month. Bibiana Ariano de Labra, aged 22, had also been operating an industrial mixer at a Northeast Foods factory in Clayton. She was fatally crushed by the machine, but like with Lopez Severiano's case, the particularities of the accident weren't disclosed pending the official inquiry. Number 5. Ukrainian Man in the summer of 2021, the photo of a Ukrainian man stuck in a half-open window earned considerable attention online. The man had reportedly been spending time at his ex-girlfriend's home where, at some point, he'd been pressuring her into having intimate relations. The woman refused, and an argument ensued. She asked her former partner to leave the area, but the man, reported as being drunk at the time, wouldn't relent in his pursuit. He later tried to gain access to his ex's home through a half-open window, with the reported intention of begging her for intercourse. He got stuck sideways in the process, with his lower half sticking out of the home. It wasn't clear how long he remained trapped, with some sources reporting that it had been for several hours before the woman discovered him in the window and called the police. The emergency services rushed the man to the hospital after they found him unconscious and on the verge of suffocation. Number 4. Rosie Cole British student Rosie Cole was drinking with her housemates at their accommodation in Beresford Avenue, North Hull, in the fall of 2020. After they'd indulged in several bottles of wine and honey tequila, 21-year-old Cole was dared to get inside the dryer. The inebriated young woman thought there was no chance she'd fit, but nevertheless decided to attempt the impromptu contortion act. Cole got in feet first, wiggled her hips inside and was, by her own admission, surprised with how easily it went. However, as her legs got crossed behind her, the young woman's lower half got stuck inside the machine. Laughter initially filled the room in the video recorded incident. The mood slightly began to shift once Cole's housemates realized that she couldn't get out and the dryer tilted forward whenever they tried to force the extraction. Cole's arms eventually got tired and she was no longer able to support her weight, which left her face down on the floor and with her backside in the air. The fire brigade was called and Cole would later explain the decision as they save cats from trees, so maybe they could save students from tumble dryers. One of her housemates was awoken by the sound of sirens and rushed downstairs thinking the house had caught fire 
The young woman would later describe the scene she'd stumbled upon as the funniest thing she'd ever seen and immediately started filming as three firefighters worked to remove coal from the dryer. The men, described by the embarrassed student as lovely in their interaction with her, were ultimately successful in the rescue effort and, before leaving, jokingly opened the washing machine, asking if anyone else needed saving. Number 3. Jorge Herrera Around Christmas time in 2016, California teen Jorge Herrera snuck out of his home in the Stockton area against the curfew imposed by his parents. To avoid being scolded by them, the 18-year-old then tried to get back inside the living room, where he usually slept, through the chimney. Herrera got in feet first but then got stuck at chest level. As later reported by the Stockton Battalion Fire Department chief, the teenager likely spent the entire night halfway inside the chimney. When firefighters were eventually called to the home, they spotted Herrera's legs dangling out into the living room. Rescuers removed a considerable amount of bricks from the chimney and poured soapy water down the chute to help the teen's body get loose. They then used ladders and a harness to hoist him out. Herrera was reported as being embarrassed by the incident but otherwise unharmed. Number 2. Casey Munchau On May the 11th of 2022, a body was found in a car submerged in floodwaters near McKay in Australia's Queensland state. The victim, subsequently identified as 31-year-old Casey Munchau, was still strapped into her seat upon being discovered by local authorities. It later emerged that the woman who ran a successful wedding photography business in the area had been traveling with two other people on Surprise Creek Road in Mount Osa. When the vehicle was swept by floodwaters, the passengers, only identified as a 50-year-old Mount Charlton man and a 30-year-old Mount Pelion woman, were able to get out. Manchao, however, became stuck in her seat. Her vehicle was still visible from the road, but it got covered in water by the time rescuers arrived in the area. Manchao was survived by her husband and three children. Number 1. Sydney Joe 27-year-old Sydney Joe from Ann Arbor, Michigan, documented a mishap with a metal folding chair on TikTok. In the summer of 2021, Joe had gotten stuck in the chair and begun panicking after trying absolutely everything to get out. One of the clips showed her standing with her waist trapped between the seat of the chair and the bars attached to the legs, akin to a medieval torture device. Others on the platform offered potential solutions. One of them was for the woman to unscrew the chair while another proposed she get out the same way she'd gotten into it. When nothing worked, Joe called the fire department and documented the rescue effort in a video that subsequently gained millions of views. Firefighters initially tried to use bolt cutters but then brought in a hydraulic cutter that's typically used to free car crash victims. Joe, who lived on a college campus, was successfully released from the chair and told her rescuers that she'd gotten trapped as part of a school project in lieu of the ironic truth which she subsequently revealed on social media. Joe was a stuck fetish content creator in which her followers would pay a fee to watch her get trapped in some way and, in the young woman's words, actually struggle to get out like not fake it at all. Joe claimed to usually create situations which she knew offered the possibility of escaping and that the chair predicament had been the first time she was actually stuck. Joe described the incident as really scary, but also as probably the best stuck video she'd ever made. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be stuck on a remote island or in a loveless relationship? Let us know in the comments section below.